you know, for kids. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Now hopefully you listened to the video of my kids reviewing Black Panther. And by the way, there's a few videos out there with my kids. There's not many, and I always do a few, and they'll like pick up in speed, and then some jackass ruins it by making a bunch of, you know, gross, uh, you know, assaulting kind of comments toward my kids, and I back off, uh, and which I shouldn't do, but, you know, always it always weirds me out. Um, but anyway, they, uh, they, they reviewed Black Panther, sort of. And to set the stage a little bit, if you didn't listen to that video, so basically, you know, Black Panther came out on Disney Plus, opening day on Disney Plus. Um, I hadn't seen the movie. This is one of the first times I didn't get to see the movie in the theater, and it was just a combination of flying and travel, and just it got away from me. And then I got to the point where like, ah, screw it. But I think this may be the first Disney or the first uh, uh, Marvel movie I didn't actually see in the theater, so it's kind of kind of weird. And um, so I, you know, sat down. I think my wife and I are both looking, not I don't know, looking forward to it, but we're like, yeah, okay, this could be good. I think I liked the first Black Panther. I thought it was an interesting kind of, you know, world that got created there, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I think that the uh, they killed off Killmonger, which was a mistake, uh, but you know they do that with everybody. But I, I thought that was all right, and. My kids, uh, I think my younger daughter didn't really pay attention to it. I mean, she was younger at that point, um, and I, so she wasn't really into Black Panther. But my older daughter thought it was pretty cool, the stuff that went on. She, she was, she's, she's good with it. And uh, we put it on, and I, as I mentioned, and I, it's not a joke. I think people thought I was, was making it up on Twitter when I mentioned this, but, um, but you heard it in the video. My younger daughter, 10 minutes in, um, asked to do homework, and <laughs> that... <laughs> that was like that was a first and she goes over and does homework and then keeps doing homework in advance so like she completes what she needs to and then keeps going for the rest of the movie uh kind of paying attention every now and then to some of the action scenes uh my older daughter sat with it but was clearly bored uh on the phone to play minecraft doing other things um uh, but it, it just and and in fairness and somebody pointed out in the comment they're right this movie is arguably not for them uh, Black Panther uh, 2, um, Wakanda Forever, it, it was a somber movie. And, I mean, from my perspective, again, I, I don't think it was awful. It was drawn out. That thing needed some editing, like 45 minutes of editing, I think, to tighten it up. Um, there was a bunch of stuff that was just auxiliary. I mean, they, they threw in the, uh, you know, the, the their, their favorite colonizer. Uh, they, they, first of all, they threw in a bunch of just cringy lines that, that seemed designed to just I, I don't know, talk to Twitter. It's like, ah, I fuck white people, right? And the, one of the things I liked about the first Black Panther is there really was not that much of that. There was a little, but there was there was a much more in Black Panther 2. They definitely went more Twitter in uh, in Black Panther 2. Uh, but certainly like Martin uh, and, and characters like that, the Contessa, like there, there was no point to having them in the movie. Like, they, they didn't need to be there. They didn't really move the plot along. You could have very easily cut their entire scenes. Now, I mean, you want to have continuity the first film. I get it, but, you know, there really wasn't value to it. And I think that was, you know, the, the movie, uh, it was a goodbye to Chadwick Boseman, and I think it is tragic that, that he passed away. And, and I think the movie did kind of sell that tone, the tone of grief. And so I, I, I appreciate that. Kids wouldn't, of course. Um, any more than like me going into Arby's for food. It's like, I wouldn't appreciate that. I would resent terribly that entire experience. Uh, but they, you know, they, they, like I said, the kids just weren't, weren't into it. Uh, and, but it, it identifies kind of this question I have, and it, it goes for the movies and the comments or comics, not the comics. You will, you'll talk in the comments about the comics. Uh, right now you hear a lot from Disney uh, from Marvel, the comics division, about getting a new audience. And the new audience they want is kids. And this is where you insert your groomer comments. But, but no, but they want, you know, a young audience. And that is a good idea. That is what they should be targeting in a lot of cases because the brand is going to age out. These movies are going to last for a generation. And you need to hook them at this age to get them into loving this IP, buying comics, etc. I would... I would strongly, strongly bet that there is there is information, there is data that Disney has that suggests 
that uh, the, the you know the kids coming up the eight to you know eight to sixteen demographic has the least attachment to characters like Star you know in Star Wars in Marvel and things like Mickey Mouse and others. I would suspect there's less attachment than ever before for previous generations. I may be wrong. It's a total guess. I've heard people claim this. I, I haven't seen the proof myself, but my guess is that. So they're saying, you know, we know that if we miss them, we're going to lose a generation and it becomes harder to keep that momentum because now you've got to convince the next generation. And if you have a generation who doesn't feel that attachment, I mean, one of the reasons why Disney, the parks have been successful is because a lot of parents have very fond memories of going to Disneyland, Disney World, going to the parks, experiencing those things, and they want to take their kids. That's why Harry Potter is still a popular brand no matter how many times you call jk rowling a turf on twitter uh it's still popular because people have memories of reading that stuff as young adults they grew up they had kids and now they want their kids to enjoy it that's that's very common but if you lose a generation not only do you not get their money it becomes hard to hook the next generation because the kids do not have that natural you know uplift from the parents so it's it's hard and i think there's probably uh, my guess is disney is scared and they should be so you hear a lot about, you know, we got to appeal to the kids, we got you know, to get the new audience in, etc. And what seems very clear to me, and I suspect I'm preaching to the choir here, is that they have no idea of how to actually do that. None. I, I think when you watch something like Black Panther 2, who is it for? It's definitely not for kids. It hooked zero kids. Uh, there is this desire to say, hey, you know, we need to subvert expectations, not give action. But you know who hates? We, you know, I, lots of people in the comments, lots of people who are in this video, people on Twitter, etc. We bitch, including me, about subverting expectations sucks. We hate it. People need to not subvert expectations. They need to give people what they want. Lots of, you know, fanboy outrage. But do you know who hates subverting expectations more than anyone else? You know what? One group hates it more than anyone kids it turns out kids hate that shit the fastest way to lose a kid audience and lose them forever is a basic feeling of betrayal you promised me this you gave me something else you said we were going to get ice cream we went to the dentist and i got shots that is that is that is death to children you do that you're done and so this style of let's let's give the audience what they need not what they want you know, lots of uh, lots of fans, lots of collectors, lots of people can complain about that. But the group that will be absolutely forever unforgiving are the kids. Kids do not want to hear any of this bullshit about what I need, not what I want. They do not want it. They don't. They don't want it. They don't think it. It's it's death. And if you take that strategy with movies and books and comics, you are basically giving the finger to that audience more than anyone else. Again, lots of people will bitch on YouTube. You could get lots of like, woke Marvel, fucking it up again. You could, you could get lots of those. But kids have zero patience and they don't run to YouTube to make an outrage video of it. They just go, <laughs> I'm never paying attention to this again. And they're done. And so when you look at a lot of the comics and I see, you know, people at Marvel like, hey, we, we've got, I, in this uh, Daughter of Blade comic, you know, the, there's there's comments from Marvel like Danny Lore really knows how to write for kids and young audiences. She really has, or they, they is, somebody help me out. Danny, he, is she or they? What what do we got there? Anyway, Danny, I'm now I'm just going no pronouns at all. Danny, I'm trying try and be respectful, but if it if, if it moves around a lot, you could, my poor little puny brain has trouble remembering what the hell I'm supposed to do. I mean, you've heard how I pronounce names. Anyway, Danny is credited for being amazing writing for kids. But when you read that Daughter of Blade comic, which in theory would be a great opportunity to say, hey, you know, vampires, not R-rated, but PG, kids, you know, it, it's, it's a girl who's a, who didn't like Buffy the Vampire Slayer? It's a girl who's a vampire slayer. She's got a dark past. She's a little sassy, maybe a little autistic. I don't know. Maybe it's just the writer. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, it, 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 uh, the, the problem that you've got is that that would be a good opportunity in theory to grab that audience you're after, kids. But when you read that comic, it, it reads like torture. It is, there's, it's, I, I, yeah, they're, they're sitting around for 90% of the comic. That's an exaggeration, but not much. 
they're they're joking about contact lens products. I, I, I don't even know what's going on, but no young audience, no kid would ever be into that. And and then you're like, well, why, who in the hell thought this person, Danny, is good at writing for kids? This su- this is awful for kids. And again, to prove it, to put my, my money where my mouth is, so to speak, I handed, I, I went and paid for Daughter of Blade, took the comic to my daughter, Daughter of Perch, and said, here, read Daughter of Blade. And, and she would not do it. But she she started, she opened it up, she looked at the first page, she then, I noticed, flipped several pages. I'm like, hey, you're flipping too fast because there's like a vomit of text on that page. There's no way you read it that fast. And then we had an argument where she said she did, and I said, no, you didn't. And then she said she did, and I said, no, you didn't. And she said, you're right, I didn't, I'm not going to. And then she's like, I thought this was a vampire book where the vampires, and I'm like, oh, they're over here, flip, 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 and they're, see on this page. And she's she's like, I, I don't, I don't want to read this. <laughs> I'm like, do you want me to get you a second issue? No. Like <laughs> a hard no. So, again, this is a 12-year-old. In theory, it's in the demographic they're after. Now, you, you know, I, I mentioned this to somebody else. They're like, well, no, but that book wasn't written for 12-year-olds. I, I Agreed. But when it was solicited, when it was advertised to the comic shops, it was young audiences can jump on board for Blade's daughter. That was how it was it was it was promoted that way. I'm not saying that's Danny's fault. It's probably Marvel's fault. But again, what are we doing here? And my question is, do these companies have any idea of what it takes to appeal to a kid? And I would argue absolutely not. They don't. And if that's a priority for them, again, they could have they could do anything. Your business strategies your own, but if that is your spoken priority, appeal to kids, then you're you're way, way off track. So, you know, how how do we how do you repair that? How do you fix it? That's the challenge. Um I, so I guess I'm curious to know, because like people come in and they'll say things like, oh my God, you know, I love what Marvel's doing here. I love the Robin book. I love whatever. whatever. I get I get people who will, will come in and they'll argue with me. I'm, I'm like, I don't think this is working. And they're like, no, it's not. It's working. It's the best thing ever. And if, if that's you, do you honestly, with a straight face, can you honestly tell me that this is this is how you appeal to kids? This is this is how you pull them in? Do you do you really believe so? And if you do, what am I missing? And I, granted, I've got two kids of my own. Maybe they're just weird. Possible. I mean, they're they're Perch, Perchington's daughters, so certainly weird. But I, you know, I don't think they're. I, I think that they're a pretty good sample set of uh, of how it works. I, I volunteer uh, not not the last year, but it, but in the past, I volunteered at schools, and I've gone in and I've taught you know an hour of art, and I go in. And I'm like, here's how you draw Spider Man. And uh, the kids always are like, oh, boy, it's Spider-Man. I'm always thinking to my head, thank God they don't know what a good comic artist is like. <laughs> but they're all, they're young. So they're like, that vaguely looks like Spider-Man. You're amazing. I'm like, yeah, you, may you never discover Todd McFarlane um, or any other comic artist for that matter. But anyway, I, having done that a lot, I'll tell you, uh, it, I, this, this stuff isn't hit. This stuff isn't for kids. So if it's not for kids, but they say it's for kids, when is the stuff for kids coming out? Or are we giving up on that? And if we're giving up on that, why do we keep saying we need to do that? What, what's going on? Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening. Get off of YouTube, you losers. I'm sorry, I take that back immediately. I don't like how that felt, and I love you guys. I appreciate that you watch.